Well, of course, if I had a milling machine, I wouldn't have to do this. Like this. So now all I have to do is file it down. Well, I've drilled all these holes for wood screws and countersunk them. Right, well I've drilled all the holes in that, ready to fit that on top of it. And I'm going to use Araldite um, Ultra to fix it on. Mainly kind of just to smooth the surface, provide a bit of adhesion. The screws will provide most of the uh, join. Right, well I've uh, mixed the arrow die and screwed all those screws down and I'm going to let it set like that. Well this is some gel coat that we've inherited from Roger together with an accelerator or activator. Um, doesn't look too good but I'm going to try it. Well that's 22 grams for test purposes. It says that you must use 20 millilitres of this stuff with one kilogram of that stuff. So we need an extremely small amount of this stuff. In fact we need 0.44 millilitres which you would think would be an extremely difficult amount to measure. But I have the technology because I bought five of these pipettes off Amazon for virtually nothing and they are graduated they are graduated so that this whole distance is one milliliter the big graduations are 0.1 milliliter so that I can easily pipette out 0.44 milliliters I think right so I mix that up and I've applied it by brush to this thing here uh, just as an experiment on a horizontal and a vertical surface you can see that there's some uh, defects in it because of already dried gel coat that I got out of that can so but there, Roger does we do have one more can of that which might be a better one to use but this is just to see whether my measurement of the hardener is going to be or accelerator or whatever the hell it's called is going to be um, okay because the shelf life of this stuff is supposed to be a year and it and it's definitely older than a year so maybe it's no good so this is why I'm testing it and part, partly that and partly because I've never used gel coat before and I just like to get an idea as to what I'm doing well it's two hours after I put this on it's very slightly tacky on the top but basically hard and the pot that I mix it in is completely solid in the dustbin so that seems to be good I wouldn't say the coating is as thick as Roger had before but look at that the coating seems to be rather thicker there maybe we need to put two layers so I'm just going to put uh, gel coat on these parts here that have been exposed by my sawing and also on the corresponding parts on the the bottom bit of the keel where the weight is right well I've painted that on and it's now to dry and likewise over here with the keel and painting round that piece of aluminium that I put on and of course I've got some mixture left over because I made too much well I had all this beautifully screwed on and araldited on and water tighted with gel coat round it but then I looked at it from the end and discovered that it was very slightly tilted, not quite horizontal in relation to, or not at right, at right angles to this line here. So I decided to rip it off and start again. Of course the Araldite was enormously strong and has taken some of the wood away with it, as one would expect. And I'm going to have to plane this down now, which is going to make it shorter. And altogether, 
it's a bit of a nuisance. Still, one thing it has proved is there wasn't the faintest chance of this thing ever coming off, even if I'd not put any of the screws in. I took the opportunity to drill the aluminium and tap it, uh, ready to mount the other components, which I'd uh, forgotten to do the first time before I glued it on. Just using the drill press as a way of guiding the tap, and I'm just uh, manually rotating the the um, pulley wheel at the top of the drill press. Seems to work quite well. I mean, I know there are things called tap followers, but I haven't got one. Wouldn't say it was exactly effortless. Right, we are through. Well, it's Thursday, the 16th of August, and uh, Dick is just uh, making a test assembly of our amazing uh, keel extension. We've spent about two days making. How many other eight of these triangular plates? Yeah. And after we made them, we decided we want to change the angle, and also that one of the holes was in the wrong place, very slightly. So that's the one that's crossed out. So we made additional holes at an angle, and then we realised that actually we'd made all the plates the same, and we actually needed to make. Half of, them the other way Half of them the other way because the one that goes at the back leans in the opposite direction. So we abandoned that for the meantime. We're just putting the, these things in vertically, and we've run out of slot nuts, so we can't actually attach the keel the, the keel weight properly. But we're just putting it in place just to see, just to like? give ourselves the impression that we've done something useful. Perhaps we should just say that. The, the concept was that we have that we've cut the keel off here, and then we ha we've set, given ourselves the option for uh, using uh, extending the keel um, variably from from uh, I suppose from putting this directly back on there again down to here, or extending this second extension down to here. Yes, so and we've got. A variable height that we can set it at, we can just experiment and see. And with those going. center plates, you can actually slide that up. Up and down. Yeah. Yes. Um, so, so that's that's the, and then the whole thing will be um, covered in some uh, uh, 1,200 gauge uh, plastic sheet. Um, just for hydrodynamic purposes. Yeah, just to give it a smooth finish. We hope. <laughs> yes, up to a point. Yeah. We've got some jagged edges on the, the, at the moment. Yeah. Um, so, so that's the general concept. So it's all ultimately adjustable. And that, then the other thing is that uh, we drilled holes there at 20 degrees to put to put a rake on the keel, so that so that we can um, slacken the screws off, swap them around a bit, and, and have the keel coming at an angle like that's this right. in a sort of parallelogram way. Except that we're half. A, on the the back plates, the, the angle needs to be the opposite yeah, way. That's the bit we've got to change. So the, the, how we're going to do that, I don't know. The concept of doing that is so that um, uh, while this extends the depth of it and perhaps means it doesn't heal so much in strong winds, it should certainly resolve that, if we uh, raked it back a bit, we also might overcome any risk of um, fouling from weed or anything else. At the expense of moving that eight kilogram weight aft back. and therefore tilting the whole boat uh, nose upwards, so we have to put a, lo a, a load of ballast in the in the bow to restore a level playing field. So we'd have to see if that, if that or to has avoid a the pitch, impact, yeah. we, we, which we don't know yet, but that no. seems very likely no. if we moved it back. So, uh, so that's all that in place. So generally. Except we've we've got we've only because we, we've run out of slot nuts we haven't got a plate on the back there yet have we at the bottom there's there's only one only two plates so there should be yeah. four so, so we that, can't that gives an idea of the uh, the full extent that we it can. gives you an idea of the enormous size of this thing we've created <laughs> now is that a deep enough keel <laughs> <laughs> right so here's the same uh, equipment with with the uh, Keel collapsed to its minimum height. 
On the extension. On the extension. Which looks like possibly a slightly more reasonable depth, do you think, Dick? I think it's worth starting off trying that. Yes. And if we feel it's still healing too much, then we can always extend it. Yes. But we might find that's adequate. Yes. Um, now that we've collapsed it down like that, of course we've got stuff sticking. It's still not sticking too far forward, is it? I was just looking at it down here. No, but there might be room just to move the plate along a little bit. We could do. Yeah. We've st we have, and we've also got the um, the option uh, to remove these uprights altogether and just attach. Yes. That that horizontal yes. to this horizontal yes. with, uh, say, these two with just, plates. With just one, yeah, indeed. And, uh, and and just have it back to the, close to its original depth. Yes. So we've, yep. we've got the vast amount of... Flexibility. Flexibility, yeah. Right, Dick is just uh, trying uh, dressing the expanded keel with uh, what is in fact a plastic damp proof mem membrane or a polythene damp proof membrane but uh, just to make it uh, hydrodynamic. You sure you haven't made it too short there? And then a bit of masking tape and you won't, you hardly tell anything has happened, will Not you? masking tape, duct tape. Uh, duct tape, sorry, yes, duct tape. Not duck. Tape, a duct tape. Yes, duct tape. <laughs> yeah, nobody will notice that we've changed it. <laughs> if it was white, at any rate. There you go. That looks absolutely fine to me. I can't see what uh, anybody could complain about. No. Tape the top bottom. Yep. And, and the, the back. back. Yep. I think that'll work fine. I think it will.